working in Texas. We have to transfer your car and money to Texas. I said, heard nothing like that. Coming through Oklahoma, and you know, I'm able to use the car now. Well, it's something about Texas. I said, well, you guys need, you guys need help. You know, I'm sorry, but God made a way. We got the hotel paid, and and we're here this morning, all the way from St. Louis, Missouri, Berkeley, Missouri, whatever. I thank God for being here. Man. Truly God can make a truly God can make a way, amen. Jesus. He can God make a way. All you gotta do is just call on him, he'll make a way for you, amen. 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 Praise God. I haven't sung this song in a while, so we don't. Amen.
He saw the best. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Truly, God only sees the best of us. Amen. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you did in the past, but when God looks down from heaven, he only sees the best of you. Amen. Right. I don't care what people say about you, you know, uh, you know, uh, well, how you feel, you know, right now, you know. Uh, if you're online right now, you listen to me online right now, it doesn't matter about, about the drug addictions or the alcoholism, Amen. but when God looks down from heaven, he only Amen. sees the best of you, amen? Right. He looks inside of you. He sees your broken heart, amen? amen. God can fix your broken heart, amen? amen? He only sees the best of you. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. On, Praise God. I'm thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful to be here, amen? amen? Because God only sees the best of you, amen? Praise God. We give God the glory for it all. Amen. Because God is great and worthy to be praised. He sees the best in all of us. He sees the best in me. When I didn't think I had anywhere else to go but down, God picked me up because he saw the best in me. And I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. And I was saying this morning, I was making my, my um, contribution to the beginning of the day. I was saying... I love you, Lord. I love you, I do. Amen. Is that my speaker? I am a 
friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Over and over. I am a friend of God. Oh. I am a friend of God. Friends, amen. amen. Don't get quiet a minute. Come on Every now. Come friend. on now. Come on. Let's keep the praise going, yes, you know. Lord. We are friends of God, amen. amen. If we are friends of God, we should be praising God, amen. amen. 
We should have our hands lifted up right now. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. If we, was in the, Jesus. if we was back in the club like we back in the old days, we'd be up dancing yes, and doing all, all yes, kinds of crazy Lord. things. Amen. Lord, but we in church. Hey, we can dance. Yeah. We can yeah. dance here, amen. Or we can shout me, amen. Hey. And we might not be in the club, but I can tell you right now, we're in the presence of God, amen. amen. And it's a blessing to be in the presence of God, amen. Oh, amen. Praise amen. Praise God. Oh, man. Praise God. Let me, let me find this song. Celebrating Thanksgiving because it's who it's to God that we give yes. our thanks. Yes. Always and forever. Amen. 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 Let me hear the worship. Woo! Who my praise is in? Yeah. Oh, come on, clap your hands. Come on. Let's have a little church. Y'all ready? Come on, Pastor, get in with it. Alright, alright. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. Is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, Every praise, 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 to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Is to our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Hey. Come on now. Come on. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Is to our God. Is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. 
praise. All of my worship is to God. Every praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every praise. So it says every praise. All of my worship is to our God. There's no other God like our God, amen? That's why we praise him like we praise him. Some folks might call us crazy, amen? We're not crazy. We're just praising God, amen? We are special people. We are peculiar people, as they say. A different kind of people, amen? Amen. Praise God. We praise God. We shout. We dance, amen? Amen. It's all to the glory of God, amen? Not, it's not to me, amen? I'm not here because I want to put on a show, amen? I'm not here because I want to because I want to uh, make myself look good or be better than somebody, amen? I'm here because of God. I'm here because God touched my heart. He touched my mind and say, and, and I'm here this morning to give him all the praise, amen? It's not about me, amen? It's not about the clothes I got on. It's not about the car I drove up in. It's not about my house, amen? It's not about my job. It's about Jesus, amen? I'm here because of Jesus. I'll give him all the honor and all the praise. He deserves it, amen? We sing that song that God deserves it, amen? He deserves the praise and all the worship, all our honor, amen? Amen, praise God. I'm not going to take too much of your time, amen? Amen, praise God. I want to thank you guys for joining us here at the New Testament Christian Church. If it's your first time joining us in service this morning, if you would, follow a connection card for us and place it in the office as it comes around, amen? And if it's your first time joining us online, let us know in the comments where you're joining from, Amen? Truly, we, we want you guys online to just kind of set aside whatever it is you got on, that you got going on right now. Just begin to come into the service with us. Have church with us this morning, amen? Yeah. Truly, we, you know, we are coming up to Thanksgiving, and we are thankful. Amen? We're not thankful just one day on Thanksgiving Day, but we are thankful every day for the blessings of God, amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Peace. But this is the day where we have set aside. So come on and join into the service with us this morning, amen? Yeah. Amen. We also want to take this time out to thank you guys once again. For your tithes and options, like I said, go to help to promote the service in the church. You know, the uh, online stream that we have going on right now, the, you know, the service that we have going on, the online Bible study, our online prayer meeting, all those things we put together because of your tithes and options, amen. amen. It also helps keep, you know, keep the lights on in the church and other things that we have to get done around the church, amen. We also want to thank you guys for your budget offering. It's whatever you, your weekly budget offering. It's whatever you, you, you want to give every week, and we thank you for it, amen. Yeah. And for those that are helping us out with the Uber rides, we also want to thank you guys, too, for your offers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to service, over to Pastor. Looks like he's ready now. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in service this morning. Amen. Thank God for an opportunity to be in service with us. Uh, maybe in service with God and just having God bless. Now, uh, I got a message in. Um, Sister Melissa, their car broke, uh, the key broke in the lock, and they're not able to join us today. So, Melissa, we're, we're thankful that uh, it wasn't anything really more serious than that. Uh, sorry that you're not able to see us, but uh, glad that you joined us online. So, appreciate that. And uh, I'll let you know how Brother Franklin's smoke turkey comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate each one here this morning. And I want to have a good time. I'm glad to have uh, uh, Ammon with us in service this morning. And uh, Sharon, and uh, one more time, what's your name, sir? Yeah. And glad to have both of them in service, and God's been good to us. We appreciate, for, appreciate all that God is doing. Sister Tucker is going to take the little ones to this Sunday school room, and then after service. Now, really, everybody keep your mind on God this morning, um, and let's have church. And after church, then we'll have our fellowship in the worship, uh, in a fellowship dinner for Thanksgiving. Uh, Nika, sweetheart, you're staying with me today. Yeah, but you'll see Sister Tucker just a little bit. Huh? Oh, sister, you called her? You sure? All righty. I want Nika with me next time. <laughs> yeah, I want Nika here, but that's okay. Go ahead. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I'll probably hear about that later. <laughs> All right. We're glad for the goodness of God this morning, and uh, they were ex feeling excited about God and, and really having a good time. In fact, she's one like, can we do one more song, one more song? No, we can't, <laughs> because we're actually a little late this morning at started, so. 
but we're glad for each one here this morning. We're going to be looking at the book of John this morning. John chapter 11. Again, thankful for what just God is doing and uh, each one uh, here in the work of God. All right, let's start reading in, the, in verse 6. Now, for those of it like, you don't have to, but for those of it like, um, I did give, make some sermon notes. So if you wanted to take uh, notes on, on the message, we've been looking at spiritual awakening. And so uh, we started out a uh, weeks, couple weeks ago, uh, last week, and actually Sunday morning, Sunday night, and we had Bible study. And then we're, uh, this week morning, looking at spiritual awakening. And this morning, uh, we want to finish it up, but I wanted to do, if, if you wanted to, uh, there are some notes that you can write down, take notes of things, whatever you like. Um, now, I don't want that to hinder you getting in having church. I want the Spirit of God to move this morning because I need some people to get blessed this morning. In fact, I happen to know, and I, some of the prayer requests coming in, somebody needs a miracle this morning. And I know as we get focused on God, God is able to bless us and move in our hearts and minds. And so uh, I want you to receive your blessing this morning. And so, you know, use those notes if you'd like to, but more importantly, worship the Lord this morning. Have a good time. Let God bless you. And I'm very thankful for the goodness of God. Now, Anthony and uh, Sharon were telling me about uh, one of my members many years ago, many, many. Now, she wasn't the first church member. Uh, that we had graduated from Bible school, but pretty much it was right after that. Um, maybe a uh, couple weeks later or whatever after that, but she came out, and I was telling how uh, she came out, and she was a mess. And Mary, when you watch this, you know I'm talking about you. <laughs> you, you, were, you were a mess, and, uh, but uh, I just was so thankful to see how God worked in your heart and mind. And uh, I think if I've ever had anybody have to go through things, uh, before this let go and let God, it was Mary. Uh, she called me uh, um, 1 o'clock one morning. Uh, it was uh, uh, Friday morning or whatever, but it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and uh, she was fussing at me. She said, I don't want to be like Sister Tucker. I don't want to do this. I don't do that. And I decided, you know, I said, you know what, Mary? You let God speak to you. I said, obviously, if you're calling me at 1 o'clock in the morning, somebody's speaking to you. <laughs> somebody's speaking to you. <laughs> And uh, so she, uh, she did it, we prayed, and she just got, after that, she just got in, and God began to mold her and make her into the woman of God that she is today. And I'm very thankful for uh, all the God going. They told me that she's the mother of the church. <laughs> oh, now you don't know, that blesses my soul. Because I was there at the beginning, and to see her go from now, now you tell me she's the mother of the church. Oh, my word. Now, you just, you just blessed me this morning, so I'm very very thankful for that. So she's a good sister, and we, we, we talk uh, a couple times a year. But this morning, so I know God can bless. I know God can change. So if anybody this morning wants to tell me they can't change, they can't get their blessing, they're already sharing it with you, you're wrong. You can get blessed if you want to. All right. John chapter 11, verse 6. And when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after said he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. And his disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, therefore, because there is no light in him. These things said he, after he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And I want to use that as my text this morning. These things saith he, after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. And this morning, with the help of the Lord, I'd like to begin or go through a message, and we're going to be hopefully have these post it to the website so people can download them and, and really go over through them because I really want people to wake up to the goodness of God. We're looking this morning at awake to gratitude. Awake to gratitude. Brother Franklin, if you want to get a mic, you can go ahead and pray over the message and messenger this morning, please. Yes, Jesus. Have your hand upon these things, Lord God. Hallelujah. Touch our hearts and minds, Lord God. Yes, yes. Your pastor, the word you speak to each, Lord God, to each sitting, Lord God. To the Bible truth that we teach, Lord God, to teach each audience. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Amen. There was a man in a small town called Bethany, about two miles from Jerusalem, and this man had become ill. Jesus knew he was ill, but he had a plan. He knew that he'd already been to Judea and made some people mad, but he had a plan that is to awake this man and from his illness. But he uses a phrase that I want to look at this morning. These things said thee after they have said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I uh, may awake him out of sleep. When his disciples questioned him, he replied, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go in him again. The thought comes to mind in the world that we're experiencing hard times. We're going through hard times financially. Many are going through hard times uh, emotionally, physically. And our heart goes out to all those that are going through so many problems. In fact, some of the people that messaged me this morning and all yesterday, deep in depression, anxieties, all kinds of things happening. They know they need help, but they just can't see a way out of their situation. Uh, one lady uh, sent me a, a, actually a voice message to let me know she you know, I'm not good right now, but I know I'll get better, and I, I just, you know, and she just really let me know where she's at. And they suffer continually. Some, unfortunately, turn to drinking. Some, unfortunately, turn to drugs or lifestyle, trying to find some kind of relief. Jesus said, I go to awaken him. You see, God is trying to wake people up. God's trying to wake people up to the fact that you don't need to go to drugs. Uh, you don't need to go to alcohol because those aren't going to help you anyway. He's trying to wake people to the very knowledge that he can bless you. To be asleep to God is to be dead to the will of God. Dead to the possibilities in Christ Jesus. When people are dead spiritually... They can't see the goodness of God. They can't see the, the excitement of God. They don't know how God can bless them. They're dead to the possibilities of God. Did you know God can bless you today? God can answer all your prayers right now. But there are those who don't believe that God can bless them. Huh? And so they walk around not really realizing the blessings of God. They don't realize that God can heal them. They don't realize that God can touch their mind, give them peace that passes all understanding. In fact, the Word of God says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Oh, he said, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Man, we know what God can do. We know God can raise the dead. God can open the blinded eyes. God can make the lame to walk. We know he can put a smile on your face. We know God can pay your bills. God can make a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. We know this morning how good that God can be. If you put your faith, faith in God. God, I believe in you. Can somebody say, I believe in you, Lord? Come on, let's put it. Give the devil a black eye. Say, I believe in you, Lord. People are getting the worst in their situation because they're not believing in Jesus. When they visit family, they walk around uh, and they're doing all kinds of stuff. We, in fact, there was a, a time uh, we were visiting somebody and, and they were stuck in their sin, hiding from God. And when you went, we went to the door and you could smell all this marijuana coming from outside the door and the smell of talking on the inside. And when they asked, where is this lady at? You know, we're trying to visit her. She's not here. You know she's on the inside. Another time, somebody said, somebody's not doing so well. And so uh, they had sent me a message, and I think the pastor was in uh, Mississippi, I think it was at the time. And he had sent me a message to go check on this person in there in Virginia. And lo and behold, the person actually was only about a mile down from where the church was at. So when I received the message, can you please check on this person? Uh, they're not doing so good. I looked up in, on, on uh, Google. It was a mile away. So I went to go visit her, and it was in the trailer park, and I remember uh, there a lot of people out front. They were all drinking and getting loud, and, and I was asking for the lady. She doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> she doesn't want to talk to you. If she wants to talk to you, she'll come out. Just stuck in that sin. And the devil doesn't want to get them released at all. But I was not going to. I said, well, you know what? God can help her. And I, and I mentioned the men that sent me that way. I said, if you'll just let her know, we're here to help her. We're here to help her. And I walked away, and then I found out later on that she kept going down that lifestyle and actually ended up in jail. And my heart went out to her. I see this 
so many times. People are in a situation, and instead of uh, uh, letting God help them, and then God is sending preachers by, uh, God is sending the church members by, God is sending Christian after Christian, uh, but because they're in their sin and they're spiritually dead to God, they don't see the possibility that in God. They don't know that God can deliver them, set them free. And I went by to see that woman and others along the way, but this morning, I want somebody to awaken to the very possibility of God. I need somebody to awaken to the blessings of God. If you're stuck financially, if you've got a pain in your body, if you need a miracle in your life, I need you to look to Jesus. Not look into the world. Not look into mom and dad. They can only do so much for you. Somebody needs to look to Jesus this morning because God can pick you up. God can put you on solid ground. God can make a way this morning. In fact, I want to share a message with you this morning. Don't give up on life. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up. There's hope. I said there's hope this morning. I got a, one of the most unusual prayer requests that I've ever gotten early this morning. I, I was inviting people to church and following up on prayer requests and going through all this. Uh, I need somebody uh, to help me with that, that prayer uh, part, department. Um, really going all through the prayer. I need a, a prayer team that can help me with that, but uh, I had mentioned to a man, he was telling me that I'm getting ready to get kicked out of my house. I've got five cats, three adults, and I guess the landlord had come in and said, you guys got to go. And so I was following up with that, and I said, how are you doing? Did everything work out okay? Did you get a place to stay? And he just told me he's ready to die. So I'm ready. I'm praying for death. Pray with me. You want me to pray that you die? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And just, you know, just really, he said, I, I don't have the energy to move. I don't have the energy. I don't have the money to move. And they're telling me I've got to go. I'm ready to die. Pray for me to die. I said, that's got to be the most unusual prayer request I've ever received. And I am not praying that prayer. <laughs> Why? Because I believe that God can make a way. When you begin to look at all the things and the devil's singing in your ear, there's no help for you, uh, nothing's going to change, you might as well go ahead and die. I want to turn that record over, if you will, uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, things can change. Uh, things can get better. Uh, God can help you. Uh, God can make a way. You don't need to pray for death. Be alive to hope this morning. Awake to the very possibilities of Jesus. Now, one of the things we need to awake to, and that is God is calling you. God is calling you. Over and over we hear that nobody cares. Preacher, nobody cares if I die. Nobody cares if, uh, if I, I, I keep going down the way that I'm going. Nobody cares. A lot of times people are finding they're getting cut back in programs and they're getting kicked out of their homes or, or politi politicians are more concerned about you know, their time in office than maybe really doing the job they were sent there to do. And, and over and over again there's just a, a developing sense in a lot of the folks that we deal with, nobody cares. Now, to illustrate that, just to a degree, I ran across a story about uh, a, a county worker uh, that was uh, found uh, dead in her cubicle. She had been working in L.A. and uh, in, a, in, a, in a place where there weren't a lot of people around where she was at. In fact, where she was at, it was just cubicles everywhere, but on the specific floor where she was at, there was nobody around her row. Nobody around her row. And she was in a vacant cubicle on the second floor. And unfortunately, she was there for about a day or so before somebody found her. And when you look at that, you know, it kind of illustrates that. That people do not care and that there, there's not people being watched over. But that's one of the reasons why I preach Jesus. Because when you look to God, you know right away from God's word, God's concerned. God's concerned. Uh, the world may not be concerned about you, uh, and you may go unnoticed uh, uh, to the world, uh, but there's a God uh, in heaven. Uh, he's looking down upon you. Uh, he cares about you. Cares about your tears. He cares about your mental health. He's concerned about all the pressures of life that you have going on. I told this man, I know you got to move, and you say you don't have the energy to move, but there's no reason for you to give up. <laughs> God can make a way. You see, so many times uh, people uh, are, are looking at life and, and then the enemy just shuts them down and doesn't show them any options. Uh, and that's why I need somebody to awake to Jesus uh, because when you serve God, God gives you options. God helps you. You know, in your mind, you, you're telling yourself, I can't do this and I can't do that. 
That's only the lie the devil wants you to believe. But when you awake to Jesus, you'll find out you've got possibilities. God can make a way. In fact, the word of God says, but to Israel, he said, all day long, have I, my have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and a gainsaying people? You only don't, you don't realize that. You're, you're blind to this, but God is reaching out. Even now, right now, he's reaching out to you. God wants to bless you. God wants to comfort you. God wants to draw you close. Maybe you can't see it this morning. So hear from the word of God. He cares about you. All day long, have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Now, the other thing I need you to understand is that when you awake to Jesus, you awake to love. God loves you. Y'all don't hear me this morning. I said God loves you. When you awake to Jesus, uh, you find a love uh, that's like any, no, no other, no other love. Uh, many times people settle for a love that's manipulative. Uh, they settle for love uh, that's temporary. Uh, but what they really need uh, is a love uh, that will bless your soul. Uh, a love uh, that's here today and will be there tomorrow and the next day and the next day all the way to eternity. You see, this morning, uh, I need you to understand, awake to Jesus because his love is eternal. His love is eternal. In fact, the word of God said, Behold, what manner of love is this, that we should be called uh, the sons of God. Uh, he died on the cross for you. Uh, his heart is saddened uh, by all the things that you go through. Uh, when you begin to call to God, there's somebody uh, listening for your prayer. Uh, somebody is watching uh, what you're going through. You need to awake to the very fact that Jesus knew Lazarus was sick. Jesus knew Lazarus had passed away, but he also knew nobody else could help him but him. Nobody else could help Lazarus but Jesus. He said, I go that I may awake him. Can I just share something with you this morning? God knows nobody else can do for you what he can do for you. That's why he calls you. That's why he calls you. Sometimes people get upset because things are not working out for them. They can't get this man that they want. They can't get this job that they want. Things are not working out. And just like Mary, some call me upset. I can't do what I want to do. I don't want to do this. I don't even want to be in church. <laughs> well, you may not want to be in church, but there's somebody that wants you in church. <laughs> I said, there's somebody, he wants you in church. He wants you delivered. He wants you serving him and not the devil. He wants to translate you into the kingdom of his dear son. Jesus is wanting you out of the bar room. Jesus is wanting you off the streets. Jesus is wanting you in the church. She said, I don't even want this. <laughs> but God wants you. You see what I'm looking at this morning? Is that he loves you so much. He loves you so much that he knows that if he doesn't come your way, there's no help for you. So, so many times people are saying, this is, not, this is not working out for me, and that's not working out for me. And so I'll ask, just out of the blue, how is everything between you and God? And then they want to tell, tell me, you didn't hear a thing I just said. I said I'm broke, I, and I had to move. I need a car a payment, a car payment or my, my brakes are going out of the car. You're not listening to anything I'm saying. How is everything between you and the Lord? Preach that doesn't even make any sense. Oh, yes, it does. Because when you make things right between you and God, he can bless you with your finances. He can help you with a place to stay. When you begin to make things right between you and God, God can help you with that job. God can help you uh, with that person that you're trying to get to. Uh, God knows the right soulmate for you. In other words, when you give it over to God, God can make a way. And he does so because he loves you. How many believe that God loves you this morning? Come on, how many believe that God loves you this morning? He loves you uh, with an everlasting love. Uh, he loves you uh, so much. He's drawn you. Uh, he loves you so much. He literally puts his hand against some things that you're getting ready to do or what you're trying to do. Some folks don't understand. They said, I don't understand why my girlfriend left me. I don't understand why my boyfriend left me. I don't understand why this job didn't work out. I don't understand why this is not working out. That is the grace of God trying to corral you, if you will, <laughs> and to doing the right thing. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, not only do you need to awaken to the fact that God is calling you, but you need to awaken to the blessings of being saved. You don't see all the blessings that are here this morning 
In fact, some of us look at us and say, well, you guys don't have a whole lot of blessings. You don't have a whole lot going on to look at us. None of us are, or maybe that, that I know of, are, are famous or, or uh, uh, name all in the papers. And, but what really is it? What's going on here this morning? There's so many blessings that the natural man can't even see all the blessings that are here this morning. God's given us peace. God helped our brother and sister make it to church. We're glad to have them. She sent me a message the other day. I'll see you Sunday. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Looking forward to that. May have to go through a few hurdles, <laughs> but God makes it way. <laughs> Come on out. God is good to us. There are those that need peace. You know, the devil tried to take you out this last week. Give you so many burdens and problems that you would just quit throwing the towels. But God came along. And right at the point of you getting ready to give up, you felt the spirit come upon you. God opened the door. God made a way. In other words, there are blessings here because we are learning to give our all to God. We awaken to the blessings of God. Sometimes people talk about the joy of being saved, but it's only talk. A lot of times it's fake. There's a lot of people that come to church and put on a show. There's a lot of people that want to rub elbows with us, but don't have a reality in God. They just want to be able to tell somebody, I went to church on Sunday. But they leave it at that. They don't take Jesus home with them. They don't allow God to speak to their heart on Monday uh, and on Tuesday uh, and on Wednesday. They don't allow God to deal with their heart all week long. This is when, when I come to church, I want to be able to wave at everybody and shake everybody's hand and say, praise the Lord. In other words, they try to act saved. Trying to look like they're saved. But right now, I want to share something with you. There's a blessing, not when you're trying to look saved, but when you are saved. Not acting like you're saved, but truly having Christ on the inside. There's a blessing uh, when you come to church uh, and you're not putting on a show, but you're just allowing God to deal with your heart. Uh, you see, there's life in God. There is a life uh, when you give yourself, you say, God, come into my life. Take away my sin. God, do a work in my heart and mind. Do you remember when you prayed that prayer? God, come into my soul. God, my life is a mess, and I need you to put your hand upon me and put all the pieces back together. Lord, I need you this morning. Can somebody say, I need you, Lord? Come on, let me say it like you mean it. I need you, Lord. When you begin to give God all the praise and let God help you because you need the very blessings of God. You see, when you look at this, there is a life in God. Matthew says, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. There's no such thing as being on the fence. Either you're in or you're out. There's a lot of times people playing games because they want to show up in church, tell everybody that they're saved, but they want to walk out those doors and do everything they want for the next week, live for the devil, live for the world, then pop in the church the next Sunday morning. Praise Lord, everybody. Isn't God good? It doesn't work like that. The same God you worship on Sunday, he is good on Monday. The same God that you surrender to on Sunday morning, the same God wants to be with you every single day as you begin to say yes to God and no to the world. In fact, in Matthew chapter 7, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? He said, and then I will profess to them, and listen to this now, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Just because somebody says they're saved doesn't mean they truly are saved. There's a whole lot of people who just say they're saved. But you see, I want somebody to awaken this morning to the blessings of being saved. Not just going through the motions. Not just being a good actor in church. But to know the reality in God. To know how good that God can be to you. So we can truly be thankful. I'm thankful this morning that we serve a good, wonderful God. I'm thankful to be in church this morning. To be able to worship him and just tell him how much we love him. I, I, I like this story here. It talks about a, a young man that went to go work on an Indian reservation 
uh, with some other young people at, at the time. It was an opportunity for him to get away from his parents, an opportunity to stay somewhere rent-free, but also an opportunity to do something with some other kids as well. One day, the man that was hosting them asked this young man if he could help him with a little plumbing situation. This kid had never done anything like that in his life, and so the first thing he says, absolutely, I'll help you. Where is the plunger? And the man said, oh, you won't need a plunger. And so the little young man thought, well, it's got to be an easy job then. I don't even need to have a plunger. But he took him outside to the septic tank and showed him that there was something stuck in the, se- in the pipe leading into the septic t- uh, tank. And so he had to hold on and, and reach down and, and into all that filth. <laughs> he had to unclog the pipe. He had something he had to run there and keep trying to get it out and pl- unplug it. All that junk got all over him. He got to experience cleaning out a septic pond, having a splash all over him. And every time he tips in with yuck, this is disgusting. But he told his parents, in a summarization of that experience, I've never felt so dirty in all my life. And it never felt so good to be clean. He said, I've never felt so dirty in all of my life. And it's never felt so good to be clean. You know, there is a blessing to being saved. When you come to Jesus, yes, initially you're going to feel dirty. In fact, you're going to just feel dirty than you've ever been because you're in the presence of God and his holiness. But when you come to God and he washes you in his blood, when God cleans you up, man, you're going to say, I've never felt so good to be clean. No more anger, no more drinking, no more drugs, no more bad attitude, no more lying. God has done a work in my life. Uh, God has cleaned me up. Uh, how many can say that this morning? God's cleaned you up. Uh, God took away all your filth, uh, all the mindset that you had, uh, all the desire for sin, uh, all the things uh, that you used to do, the lies, the anger. God just takes it all. So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, old things are passed away. Why? Because you say yes to God. When we were out there in the world, people didn't even realize how dirty they were. You did what everybody else is doing. You're part of the crowd. And you didn't think about it. Then somehow God brings his will to you. Either a song or in a message that you hear or, or something over the radio. Or maybe it's a family member talking to you. But you begin to realize, man, I'm living wrong. I need to change my life. And for a while, yes, you start thinking about it. Even now, people sometimes don't even realize they've got couples living together, committing fornication. They don't even think about marriage. That one lady, one time when she was in church, uh, God convicted her and a boyfriend of living together. And a member she mentioned to me, and she said, well, what, what is marriage? It's just a piece of paper. And I said, oh, no. It's more than a piece of paper. It's a lifelong commitment to each other before God. Till death do you part. <laughs> So many times they don't even think about it. The, do- the devil in the world has lied to them, uh, and they don't even see how wrong that they are. They're those that they get, they get drunk, uh, and, and they don't even know uh, uh, the things that they're doing to their body and how they're hurting themselves. It's just a part of their life. But when they come to God, God's not condemning them, but he does shine his light upon them. And for the first time, they begin to see some things that they're doing. They say, you know what? I need to change. How many of you have ever had God shine his light upon you? And you realized, not that anybody was throwing stones at you, it wasn't a preacher uh, trying to make you feel bad, it's just the fact that you just see yourself, and you know, <laughs> some things have to change. Some things have to change. Awaken to the blessings of God. God can make you whole, God can change you, make you new, and God gives you so much, you can't even imagine all the things that God can do for you. In fact, some, over years, they, uh, they don't even realize it's the same person. Because God has changed you so much. Even now, sometimes when people are talking to me, they get mad at me. And I get a lot of folks get mad sometimes just because I tell them that God can help you. And they say, you don't know anything about what you're talking about. I'm this. I'm depressed. I've got this going on. I've got that going on. You don't know what it's like. And the reason why they say that is because they see me now. 
They see me after salvation, after the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Had you seen me years ago, I was a different person. Come on now. They think I've never experienced a problem. They think I've never had to go through issues. Why? Because they're looking at me who I am right now, by the grace of God. I've got some other brothers that God has done such a work in their life. If you were to see them when they first came out to church, you would not believe it was the same person. But God has changed them. God has done a work in their life. God has done so much in their life uh, that people sometimes say, I couldn't believe this was the same person. We have people first come to church, thugs, angry, bad attitude, walk in, can't stand white people, can't stand black people, and then God gets them moving on their heart, changing them, comforting them, teaching them. Next thing you know, you got people walking around the church that are so different when they first came to church. Man, it's such a blessing to be saved. I had a, uh, years ago I had a, uh, we, had we had a good worship service, just a really good church service. And I had this one brother, he would walk around the church. I told everybody, hey, go shake somebody's hand and encourage somebody. And so this one brother, he's white, he went on shaking everybody's hand. God bless you. Good to have you this morning. God bless you. So glad to have you in service. And he went up to this one uh, black man uh, that we had come out to the church at that time. And he went to shake his hand. And the man turned his back like he didn't see him there. And then he, the brother just kept on going. Didn't want to make a scene. Just kept on going. I saw that. And I talked to him about it. And I even mentioned it. And he said, you got to watch the white man. <laughs> you got to watch that white man. They'll stab you in the back. <laughs> I said, that's a lie. I said, there's some white men that are more my brother than some black people. <laughs> Come on out. It's not the color of your skin. It's what God has put in your heart. How God is molding you and making you. Come on up, because I know some black folks that act up, and I know white folks act up. It's not the color of your skin. It's what God is doing on the inside. Huh? And, I, and I appreciate that white brother. Why? Because he was trying to reach across uh, all the boundaries of the world uh, and say, God bless you. I'm so glad to have you in church. Uh, it's not the color of your skin. Man, it's a blessing when you can come to God and see what God can do in a heart and mind. And then right before we pray this morning, God's calling us to awaken to the burden of the Lord. To the burden. We awaken to the possibilities that are in God. And as you awaken to that, you begin to see there's more of a life that you could be experiencing. Is anybody here this morning, you want more from life? More power? More joy? More everything in God? Yes, I, I want to be able to have a more fuller life. You can have it in God. See, many times people go through things, and they're hurting. And so they quit, and they give up, not realizing that they can experience more in life. But Jesus makes a difference. I said, Jesus makes a difference. When there's a wall there in your life, and you can't go any further, you pray to Jesus. Don't just give up and throw in some, I guess I can't do it. I can't go down that path. The lady with the little issue of blood, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I should be made whole. She had hope in her heart and mind. If I can just touch Jesus, I know everything will be all right. Barnabas said, oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. They even told him, be quiet. You're making too much noise. No, I'm not. <laughs> Jesus, have mercy on me. There was a woman that was seeking uh, health for her daughter. The disciples said, put her away. She's making too much noise. But she knew if Jesus would touch her daughter, her daughter would be saved and healed. healed. Brother, I believe this morning I need somebody to awaken to that burden. Your life can be more. You want to stay where you're at doing what you're doing because you want to tell everybody that's the best you can do. But I want you to awaken to the burden, uh, the, the understanding uh, that it's not the best you can do. Uh, you can have a better life. Uh, you can go up the mountains up if you want to. How many want to go higher this morning? Uh, how many want to do more? Uh, all you need is to say yes to Jesus. God can change your circumstance. John, I'm with you this morning. You see, God's been dealing with me a lot about a lot of things lately. I've been praying for people. And, and I guess the more I'm praying, the more I'm finding a lot of times I'm part of the problem. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to love people. And I find that many times that I'm part of the problem because, because I'm doing so much to help people. 
they are hampered in their own thoughts. This is the best I can do. This is all I can be. And pastor will help me out when I can't do it. And I, and I found, wait a minute, that's not true. What you need to do is you need to pray to God. And the same God that helped me get up is the same God that can help you also. Come on out. Y'all know with me. Come on out. My wife told her a uh, testimony how that she had to take bus after bus just to get to school. God helped her. When I came to church over in Germany, they asked me to come to church in Tom, Germany, which was uh, about 45 minutes away. I had to take the streetcar, <laughs> then I had to take the train, then I had to take a, a, little, uh, a, a little bus, city bus, uh, for the last couple of blocks to get to the church home. But I wanted to be in church. I didn't think anything about it. But nowadays, if you don't come pick me up for church, I'm not coming. If you don't pick me up, I can't go. I found out a long time ago, people do what people want to do. All they need to do is believe in God. God, if you help me. Come on, somebody say amen this morning. God, if you help me. Come on now. Somebody said, I'm sorry. I have a bad attitude. I, I, I'm just an a, a ugly person. That's just who I am. That's me. I said, me can change. You don't need to walk around this church with an attitude problem. You don't need to walk around here with a chip on your shoulder. What you need to do is get to Jesus. God gives you peace on the inside. God can bless you. Uh, God can change you. Uh, you, you, you settled uh, for an angry attitude. Uh, you settled for your personality, and it's the personality of a slug. You can change. Come on now. All you've got to do is be willing to say, God, help me, Jesus. Lord, I'm looking at myself, and I know, God, I've got an attitude problem. I know sometimes I say the wrong thing. I, I don't even care what people think of me. I, I, I want that to change. And God can take all that burden away from you, all your, your nasty attitude. God can take away your temper. God gives you peace that passes all understandings. Does anybody know what I'm saying this morning? You don't have to settle for the way you've been. You can change and be so much more. God can help you. You see, when we awake up to the burden, that we can change, but we are living where we want to live. Now, why do we want to live there? Because that's our comfort zone. That's where we got comfortable. Some are only comfortable talking to Mexicans or Hispanics, Latinos. Some are only comfortable talking to Asians. Some are only comfortable talking to white people. Some are only talking, uh, comfortable talking to black people. And when I tell you that you should be a soul winner, reaching out to everybody, come on now. That challenges you. Because now you've got to put self on hold and be what God wants you to be, a soul winner. When I tell people you need to be more involved in the church, or you need a leader in church. Oh, I don't want to do that. That's going to cost too much. I'm going to have to change how I do things. But if you'll say yes to God and no to self. You see, one of the things that I want to share, and that is that God wants us to awake to a deeper walk with him. Not just eye service, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. And then just make it happen. Make it happen. I remember many times in serving God, I found out that I wasn't doing things because I was making an excuse for myself. How many of you ever said, that's just the best I can do? Anybody want to admit to that? I'm sorry, Pastor, that's just all I can do. I, I can't do any more than that. I can't do that. That's all I can do. That you can't expect any more from me. Come on out. I may not be able to expect any more from you, or may not say that I'm expecting any more from you, but God is expecting us to serve him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. And so when I'm looking at you and I'm telling you, you should be in Bible study on Tuesday. You should be in prayer meeting on Thursday. You should invite people to church every week. You should be involved in God's programs. Oh, preacher, you can't expect me to be here on Tuesday. You can't expect me to be here on Thursday. You can't expect me to be a part of the church and doing things. I'm busy. How many of you ever said, I'm busy? I'm just too busy. But you know what? If God can help me, can God help you? Come on now. The same God that's helping others is helping that you can help you also. And then the last thing, awaken to the fact you need Jesus. The more I serve him, the more I realize I need him. The more I serve him, the more I need him. I used to think I needed God every week. Now I've got to the point I know I need him every day. 
every single day. You see, this morning, he said, my meat to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. We're getting ready to pray this morning. But I want you to wake to your gratitude that God can do so much in your life. We don't have to stay a small church. We don't have to say, oh, we've got a small church. We've got a small church. And y- y'all just pray our strength in the Lord. We're, we're barely making it. No, we're not barely making it. You may be barely making it. But God's problem is alive. All God wants for somebody to let that spark come alive in them. God's challenging you to be a better church member. God's challenging you to be a better Christian. And as you begin to say yes to God and let God awaken you to the fact that he's moving in your life, I believe you bring forth people. He said that we bring forth much fruit. God wants us to grow in our, not only in ourselves, but in the work of God. As God is dealing with your heart right now, and I'm feeling God right now, <laughs> I want you to begin to imagine what God could do in your heart. What can God do and accomplish in your life if you put aside every other thing on your plate and just your focus be totally on God? What would you be doing right now? How much different would you be as a person? If you put everything else in your life on hold and if Jesus had 100% of your focus, what kind of person would you be? And then as you begin to look at that, thinking about that, listen to the scriptures. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all these other things should be added to you, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. God's getting ready to do something wonderful in somebody's life, and we're getting ready to pray. But before we can pray, you have to have belief in God. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he has rewarded them that diligently seek him. As I get ready to ask for people to come up to pray, what can God do in your life if he had total control over your life? What could God do? God could bless you with a new job. God can bless you with a uh, made up mind to, to go in every direction you want to go or whatever it is. But you first have to believe in Jesus. Awaken to the fact that God's calling you this morning. Let's all stand. We had a lot of material to cover this morning. A lot of things to go over. That's why I had the sermon notes in case people wanted to write them down. But this morning, I don't want people to walk out of this church not being taught the word of God, not being where God wants you to be, not being blessed. Somebody needs to be blessed this morning. Somebody needs a, a, a closer walk with Jesus. Somebody has a hurt on the inside. And no matter how many times you keep telling me you're, you're okay, you're okay, the Spirit of God is speaking to my heart, you're not okay. So I want you to pray right now. Pray with me. Father, we come before you. We thank you right now for all that you're doing. God, speak to my heart right now. Help me to see where you want me to be. Help me, God, to do what you want me to do. Right now, Jesus, give me the power to put aside every other distraction, every other call, every other burden that I think I have, and to focus on you. Come on, I need somebody to focus on Jesus right now. Focus on God. Father, I pray in in the name of Jesus. Somebody here, God, is supposed to be a mighty person in God, a mighty soul winner. God, a a, a mighty admin person, a mighty worker in the church, a a mighty kingdom worker. Your days of raising up mighty men and women of God is not over. God, you're still raising up Daniels. You're still raising up Moses. You're still, God, raising those to be, God, uh, glorified and, and to do your work. There's other Pauls out there, Lord God, other Deborahs. Lord Jesus, I pray right now. Help somebody right now to realize there's more of a walk with God they can have. All they want to do sometimes is keep you in the back burner, Lord, as everything else is going forward. But right now, God, I pray somebody speak to their heart. Let them see Jesus in their life. And as we get ready to have this prayer altar call, this miracle altar call, I pray, God, accomplish your divine will. 
I'm going to walk down, God, in front of the altar, and I'm going to believe with all my heart that if they'll walk up to the church and believe whatever it is that you're speaking to the heart, they can do it. Whether they've ever been trained in it, training will come. Whether they know a whole lot about the subject, that will come later. God, all they need is God for you to put in the heart what they're supposed to be doing, and we're going to pray that be done right now. All the doors will be opened. I pray right now that every gate, everything is hindering somebody, be torn down. That the way to your will be made available right now, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, whatever is in the way of somebody, God, in their walk with you, I, I pray in the name of Jesus, uh, just like the walls of Jericho, let it be torn down right now, God. And give them a straight path to your will. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, call on that name. There's power in the name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, let your will be done. God, as we come down, I don't want to have to force anybody, but I know somebody needs a miracle this morning, Lord God, and I'm believing right now, God. I need somebody to awake to your blessings. God, awake to your call, and just awake to the burden, God, that they can live a better life, that they just get more Jesus. And I ask this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to come down here, Brother Franklin, if you'll go ahead and transfer the camera, please. All right. Hallelujah. On this Thanksgiving worship service, I am thankful I get to do this this morning. I'm very thankful that I can be a part of somebody being set free and being what God wants them to be. I don't know all that God's calling you to do, but I know we need help here in this church. We need help. And I'm thankful for... Uh, all of those that are, are already have stepped forward and, and trying to help out. And I know the devil's fighting some people. I know that already from the, all the messages I got in this morning. But I also know God's getting ready to do something great. So now if God is touching your heart to step out in faith and do more for him and, and, and to get your mind f more on God, and you want me to pray for you, come on up right now. I want to pray. I want you to be whatever God wants you to be, and I want to pray for your miracle right now. So if you're waiting for your miracle, if you need a blessing from God, as he directs you, come on up right now. I want to pray for you. Amen. Amen, brother. What can we pray for this morning? All right. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, <laughs> we love you, Lord. We thank you for Eddie. God, we thank you for being in his heart and his mind. And, and Lord, he's praying for God to keep him, God, from distraction. The, Lord, he's praying right now for a more sturdy walk with you. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, uh, touch his mind right now, Lord God. Uh, I pray, God, guard his mind. Uh, I pray steal his mind right now, God, to your will uh, and to be what you want to be. Uh, I pray surround him right now, God. In the name of Jesus, I claim this. Let it be so. Now, I want you to pray right now. God, touch my mind. Keep my mind on you. Help me to serve you. And I ask this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Who's next? God's dealing with your heart. Amber. Yes, ma'am. What are we praying for? Father, thank you right now, God, for our sister. She's asking for wisdom. Wisdom is the accumulation of facts and knowledge. Lord God, we thank you for those that accumulate knowledge, but how to apply that knowledge, how to walk in your will, to do what you want us to do, that is always most important. I pray for Amber right now, God, that you touch her. Keep her, Lord God, in your grace and mercy. God, I pray even when she doesn't want to go down a certain path or, or when it requires her to step out of her comfort zone, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, touch her, Lord God. I feel, God, the enemy is trying to keep her, God. Lord, distract her. But I pray right now, God, show her the path to walk down. Help her, God, take her by the hand. And I pray in the name of Jesus, help her to be the gospel worker that you've called her to be. And I want you to pray that prayer, Amber. God, help me to be about your business, to do your work, and to be led by your spirit. 
Lord, we give you praise and glory right now. God, we thank you. We give you praise. We claim this in the name of Jesus. Lord, let her grow. Let her receive that miracle right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, God bless you. Come on up, Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. What are we praying for? Amen. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness. I thank you for Ammon, Lord God, and we met through the prayer ads, and with God, you brought in the service, and, and Lord, I'm so thankful, Lord God, that he, got, he has a heart and mind uh, to do work for you. Uh, Lord, I know, God, as he's coming from, it was Zimbabwe, right? Father, I pray, Lord God, continue to help him, Lord God, as he's here in America now, God, for his family in Zimbabwe, trying to have his family come and join him. I ask God, in the name of Jesus, give him wisdom. God, give him guidance. Keep his mind focused on you, Lord God. Lord, there's so many things, God, that you're calling him to do. Uh, Lord, but I pray in the name of Jesus, show him the way to walk. God, what to do in your will. And Lord, I'm just praying right now, God, help him, Lord God. There's others uh, that need help, God. There's others, God, uh, that need to hear that Jesus says, in the name of Jesus, help Ammon right now. In Jesus' name. I want you to pray right now. Let's pray for your family. God, help me to be the man that you want me to be. Help my family, Jesus, and help me here to be a soul winner. God, we give you all the praise and glory. Thank you right now, God. Touch Ammon in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. <laughs> Bless you, brother. <laughs> Amen. All right, who else? Come on, who else? Come on. We're going to all pray in just a second here, but let's, I want to do this first. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory. I'm thankful, Lord God, that all we've gone through together, Lord God, Lord, you continue, continue to keep his mind focused on you and being a better Christian, a better worker. I ask in the name of Jesus, God, help him to learn to be that worker that you've called him to be. Lord, I thank you, God, that when he needs to step in, he's able to step in and do whatever is called upon him. I give you all the praise and the glory. God, give us a mind to do more, a God of mind, God, to grow in Christ Jesus. And I give you all the praise, Hallelujah. all the glory. Let's pray that prayer, brother. In the name of Jesus, help me to be the worker that you want me to be. Lord, I pray, bless Brother Franklin right now, God. Keep your hand upon him, God, and protect him. And we give him glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. One more. Come on. Come on, Mr. Joe. What are you praying for? Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness. It just thrills my heart, God, when people realize there's so many ways they can go, so many directions they can go, so many paths they can walk down. And Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity, God, to encourage people to seek your face, to find out what your will is. I pray, God, that you touch Joe right now, God. Show him right now in the name of Jesus, God, the direction that you'd have him to go. Lord, and the things that you'd have him to do. Lord, I know, God, there's a lot of opportunities for him and a lot of ways he could go. But God, all those ways won't give joy and peace and strength like serving you. I ask in the name of Jesus, touch him. Now, Joe, just pray, God, help me. Joe, I want you to pray, God, help me, God, help me. To, do your will. to do your will, to be your gospel worker. Father, thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Touch Joe, surround him with your will. Let him be led of your spirit. And we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. Where's my scribe at? <laughs> You've not been here doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> what are we praying for? Father, thank you right now, God, for our sister. I pray, God, that you continue to guide her. Give her strength, Lord God. I, I, years ago, when I was younger and as a minister, I would pray, God, that you make the load lighter for certain people, that you take away the storms. And, and Lord, I learned over the years that that was the wrong prayer. I can't take away the storms, Lord God. I can't take away the burdens. But what I do ask, God, is that you make her strong enough to gear, carry all the burdens, God, to, to make through every storm. God, to learn every lesson that she needs to learn. I pray, God, that you stay with her. Be that constant help, that constant strength. Lord, show her the way to go, God. When times get darker, let her see your light. I give you all the praise and all the glory. I, I feel, God, that you're getting ready to do something great in Shantae's life, God, as she surrenders her all to you, Lord God. And there's sometimes it feels like we're confused. Sometimes we're lost. We don't know what to do next. But in the name of Jesus, bring it all right into her, your will. 
Help her to see Jesus. I ask this in Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Give me strength to walk your will. God, to do your work. Oh, Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory. I feel your presence right now, God. I feel the Holy Ghost, and I know you're getting ready to do something great, God. And therefore, God, we're going to humble ourselves before you. Not my will, but your will be done. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. <laughs> amen. All right. Anyone else? All right. Then let's all come forward. Gather on the altar. Find a place to pray. Let's spend some time in God. Let God touch you. Let God guide you. Come on. Let's all come forward. Let's pray right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Find a place around the altar. Let's just pray this morning. Awake to what God's getting ready to do in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, pray. Somebody pray this morning. Give him praise and glory. He's speaking to hearts and lives. God, I give you all the glory. Thank you right now, God. I pray, God, that you're blessed. God, we believe you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God. God, we give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. Those online, make sure you pray. Send in your prayer request. I'm going to pray for you in just a bit. Hallelujah. Those that are watching the video, I need you to pray right now. I need you to get a hold of God right now. Send me your prayer request. I want to pray for you. Some have already sent in their prayer request, and we'll be praying for them in just a second. Come on, somebody, get a hold of God right now. The Spirit of God is moving this morning. The Holy Ghost is here. God is dealing with hearts and lives. You've got to step out of your comfort zone. You've got to wake to what God can do within you. He's changing you. He's molding you. Don't let the enemy lull you to sleep. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name this morning, God. We thank you right now, God. Your spirit is moving, and God, you're accomplishing great things as people say yes to you. No to the world. Hallelujah. Yes to change. Yes to spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Yes to being led by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Come on, somebody needs to surrender to God this morning. Let go and let God. Let God touch you. Let God help you this morning. We bless your name. We give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let your blessings fall upon every soul here this morning. Let your blessings fall upon all those that are willing to change and to God to do your work. Not stuck in a certain mold, but God, open up the heart and mind and say, God, your will be done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name. We give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you for the Spirit of God moving within us and around us. Thank you, Jesus. And I praise your name for all that you're doing. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. Let's all stand right where you're at or at your seat. There's some people that need some prayers. And I need you all, I need the church to join me in prayer right now. First and foremost, we're going to pray for the man that wanted death. We're not going to pray for his death. We're going to pray for his life. So join me in prayer as we ask God to bless this man. Father, thank you right now, God, for your touch for us a little, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, he's got so many things going on, God. And he and his mind feel the only answer is death. I pray, Lord God, that you speak to his heart right now, Lord. I pray, God, touch him. Help him. Turn the situation around. Nothing else more, God. I need you to speak to him and let your will be known. Help him to know you. Make yourself more real to him than ever before. And, Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. I thank you, Lord God, for Lucretia. 
God, they're going through some hard times, and I ask, God, that you touch her right now, God. Turn her life around, Lord God. Help her, Lord God, with a, a new job and, and to be able to uh, take care of things. She needs a financial miracle. I know, God, that you're able to bless and move. I give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. God, I'm thankful for Deborah. She's asked for prayer because her illness, her, her lupus is acting up. And, God, she's having trouble breathing. She's having trouble walking. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch her, Jesus, right now, God. Lord, I ask, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, touch her body right now, God. Help her, Lord God. Lord, touch Deborah, Lord God, in a very special way, Lord God. Heal as only you can. We know you're the healer. God, you said by his stripes we healed. And so we claim that blessing this morning. We thank you right now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for Eddie. He said, God, that he's working seven days a week and He's having hard times right now. I pray, Lord God, that you touch Eddie right now, Lord God. Uh, help him, Lord God, with all he needs. Uh, I pray for a miracle for Eddie in his life. Uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, accomplish your divine will. God, speak to him, God, as only you can. Uh, Lord, I pray for Lance. Uh, Lord, Lance is saying, God, he's had his body is acting up. Lord, have mercy. You're the healer. You're the healer, Jesus. And we give you all the praise, all the glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I pray for Laquilla. God, her mother came out of the hospital, but she said this morning her mother had to go right back to the hospital. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you touch her, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, heal her mother, Lord God. Touch her, Lord, right now, Lord. God, these souls need you. I thank you for Farah. God, she had operation on her eyes, and God, she couldn't see for a while. I ask God to continue to heal her body, touch her mind, and Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch Frankie, Lord God, dealing with the death of her daughter. Lord, she's going through a hard time right now, and I pray. God, let her know she's not by herself. Help her, Lord God. God, continue to give her peace and joy and comfort. Lord, knowing that you're right there with her as she's going through this time in her life. Give her the strength, God, to make it through. And we give you all the praise, all the glory. Brother, just lift up God's name right now in all these prayers. Thank God. Come on. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You heard every prayer. Every prayer, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Let's go ahead and receive the offering and tithe. All Christians pay their tithe and give the offering, and we're glad for those that faithfully give as unto the Lord. Uh, Brother Tim, if you come help me this morning, please. Uh, we have uh, the website, the platform that we have uh, to giving. If you need that URL, let me know, and I'll get you that. We also add a cash app uh, this last week, Good brother, and uh, you can use that, or we take cash. <laughs> Let's you pray of the gift and the gift this morning, please. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your giving this morning. May God continue to bless you as you give unto God. And let God continue to bless you. I, uh, we're, I don't believe we'll have, we're going to have service tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, but we won't be having Bible study Tuesday or Thursday. But I do want to know who's going to be here for Thursday because we make it together Thursday for those that are here. I know a lot of people traveling, so let me know if you're traveling or not. But I'm just very thankful for the goodness of God, and I thank God for just being together. We're going to have a wonderful fellowship now, and I'm looking forward to that. But I'm really thankful to see people growing in Christ Jesus. I'm going to ask Brother Morgan to dismiss us in prayer. When he prays, finishes praying, please greet one another, and let's have a good time, and then we'll go and have some fellowship. Reverend, if you go ahead and pray, please.
Yes. Yes, yes. Amen. God bless you. Prayer church tonight at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Shake hands, shake so friendly. God bless you.